students today we are going to discuss the topic of dualism and in this lecture we will cover what is dualism how dualism is defined in economics and what are the types of dualism with with a special focus on what is technological dualism the other types of dualism we will cover in the further lectures what is dualism dualism is uh, derived from the latin word duo which means two so anything which uh, is related to which can be divided into two is is dualism and dualism theories uh, are basically the division of the society division of the economy division of the um, in production function into two you will see these all these things in the coming slides it is the division of something into two opposed aspects any theory which which differentiates between two fundamentally different things is called a dualistic theory then how dualism is defined in economics uh, it has been defined differently by different scholars by different economists you will see that uh, different sets of conditions which are which in which some are superior and other are inferior can be present in a given space in a given um, condition this is what the dualism theory specifically deals with examples of this element of dualism include urban and rural sector dualism the presence of wealthy and highly educated elite with mass of illiterate people and dependence notion of powerful wealthy in the civilized nations with weak poor peasant nations in the world economy so the coexistence of these two different sectors economies is what we are referring to the dualistic economies and the dualistic theories in which we will be referring to the dualistic theories the coexistence of the rich and the poor nations in an international system with unequal power uh, with unequal power with unequal relationship between the center where the center is all referred to as the developed and the periphery the periphery is uh, referred to uh, as the underdeveloped countries or the least developed countries as present the concept of dualism economists have related it to many aspects such as traditional agricultural sector and modern industrial sector regional dualism the difference in the different the growth pattern of the different regions and the formal sector and the informal sector dualism etc where there are different types of dualism social dualism financial dualism economic dualism technological dualism in this lecture we will deal about we will discuss about the technological dualism this concept was given by professor higgins he has defined technological dualism as the use of different production functions in advanced sector and in traditional sector of underdeveloped economies the existence of such dualism has increased the problem of stru structural or technological unemployment in the industrial sector and disguised unemployment in the rural sector ha uh, this point uh, needs a little bit of elaboration at uh, uh, this uh, we will uh, be the, in, in the next slide i will explain you how it has the technological dualism has increased the technological unemployment in the industrial sector and the disguised unemployment in the industrial sector this figure is about the production function in the industrial sector here uh, higgins has uh, assumed that there are two was two factors and two sectors and their factor and dominance and the production functions <coughs> of these two sectors the industrial sector is engaged in plantation mines oil field and large scale industry it is capital intensive and characterized by fixed technical coefficient that is factors have to be combined in fixed proportions while the rural sector is engaged in production of food stuffs handicrafts and very small industries it is changeable technical coefficient of production hence it has different alternative combinations of labor and capital the production function of industrial sector is represented in this figure here the iq1 represents the combination of oil 
units of labor and OK1 units of capital which produces a certain level of output while IQ2, IQ3 and IQ4 represent higher level of output which are only possible if capital and labor are increased in the same proportion. Thus the points A, B, C and D. So fixed combinations of capital and labor which are used to produce different levels of output. The line OE represents expansion part in the industrial sector and its slope represents constant factor proportions. The line K2L2 so the production process is capital intensive. To produce Q1 output, OK1 of the capital and OL1 of the labor are used. If the actual endowment, if the actual factor endowment is suppose at S rather than A, it means that more labor is available to produce same amount of output while here units of capital are OK1 only. Since there are fixed technical coefficients assumed in the industrial sector, the excess labor supply will not affect the production technique at all. The L1, L2 units of labor will remain unemployed. It is only when the capital stock increases by SF, then it will be possible to absorb this excess labor supply in this sector. Otherwise, it has to seek employment in the rural sector. The production function of the rural sector or traditional sector is shown in this figure. The isoquant Q1, Q2, Q3 and Q4 so variable coefficients of production. In order to produce more output, more labor is employed as compared with the capital. As a result, the good land which is here referred to as capital becomes scarce and is available and the available land is cultivated by high labor intensive techniques. At point E where maximum output level is reached is shown by QN. Thus according to Higgins because of different production functions the unemployment and underemployment comes into being in underdeveloped countries. According to Higgins, the industrial sector uses capital intensive techniques and fixed uh, technical coefficient and it is not in a position to create employment opportunities at the same rate at which the population is growing. Rather, the industrialization reduces the employment in this sector and therefore the rural sector is an alternative for the surplus labor which is present in the industrial sector as we have seen in the graphical uh, graphical representation how the L1 L2 is the surplus labor and it is not absorbed in the industrial sector but it can be absorbed in the ruler sector with the use of it can be absorbed in the ruler sector and here uh, in the uh, in the industrial sector it is the surplus labor then Uh, Higgins has also said that in the beginning it is possible to absorb the additional labor which is in the uh, industrial sector by bringing more lands under cultivation. This leads to optimal combination of the labor and the capital. Eventually with the passage of the time the goods become scarce. The ratio of the labor to the capital in that sector rises and the techniques become increasingly variable in this sector. Ultimately. All the available land is cultivated by high labor intensive techniques and the marginal product of the labor becomes zero and negative. Thus with the growth of the population, disguised unemployment begins to appear. Under these circumstances, the farmers have no incentive either to invest more capital or to introduce labor saving techniques. Or to um, this uh, is basically the theory which is given by Professor Higgins in dealing with the uh, in explaining the technological dualism. Um, or the other types of uh, dualism we will, be, we will be covering in the next lecture. Thank you.